morning guys. It is the G2P angler, Jason Reese. I uh, heading out in a beautiful January morning with my uh, co-captain here, Skipper. Had that to do a little bit of trolling this morning. Maybe we'll see how that goes, do a little bottom fishing potentially, but I wanted to give a, a quick second to talk about what we're gonna be using when we dump these lines in, because it takes me a minute to get this spread out there when I'm by myself here. So, what we have here on the two planer lines, this will be the far planer. And it's gonna be just a sea witch over a pink squid over a big long shank hook. On the deeper planer, similar thing, we're gonna go with another sea witch. This one's over a squid, followed by like a little duster or some flash under to give it a little more body. I'm trying these new sea witches, they're a little bit cheaper, but I like the mylar in them, so we're gonna see how these go today. And then uh, on the shotgun, we're gonna do this blue tuna taco. And on the outrigger, we're gonna do a pink tuna taco. So we're gonna send these out. See what we can get into today. Should be a, should be a nice morning. <laughs> shotgun the longest bait back um, point is it's you know you set them out longer so you don't tangle them as you let, let the lines out but also sometimes as I'm set the shotgun out I'll pick up a bonita or, or a kingfish before I even get like half the rest of the spread out so I'm gonna get that one out first that's gonna be this uh, blue and white to the taco yeah, sorry for the motion here we are forecast was two to three and we we're in uh, three to four today but a little bit of rougher water makes for better fishing anyways hang tight Going out first. And I send this one a long ways back, like dumping like half of the spool back. find is the further back it is the more likely you are to pick up some of those like boat shy fish especially like blackfin tuna and I've heard there's a few out here this week. The trade-off is that occasionally a careless fisherman or boater will uh, hit that last line not thinking that you have it as far back as you do but small price to pay to pick up a few extra fish out here. <laughs> seaweed out today so I'm just gonna run a, uh, a four line spread today so I'm just gonna run the one outrigger closest to me and not worry about the, the other one since I'm, since I'm by myself and if um, conditions pick up and there's lots of seaweed then I'll, I'll dial back to a three line spread so on the outrigger is gonna be this uh, pink tuna taco 
and I use these feathers a lot just because um, when I'm not by myself, they, they pick up less weeds and they're easy to maintain. They run pretty true when you're speeding up and slowing down based on other issues, whether you're avoiding other boaters or you're bringing in a fish or you're um, deploying the planers or whatever. These just tend to run easy. So they're just an easy bait to set out and they, they get bites. I get more bites on these smaller four inch feathers out here in South Florida than I do on you know, six inch chuggers and bigger, and bigger baits that um, catch fish elsewhere. So that's all this one is, a nice pink feather. <laughs> inline uh, planer trolling. So hook here, bonita strips, go ahead and laugh. I, uh, I make my own. I'm sure that these are not the most professional, but it is um, what I've been working on as I try to get better at all of this stuff, right? Like anything else, it takes a little practice. These strips aren't amazing, but we're gonna make them work. All I like to do is just poke one hole at the top here to give it, you don't wanna try to put the wire through this tough bonita skin. And then I put the wire through. We know that's gonna be the top. Pinch that up a little bit. And then I measure down here, and the hook's gotta go down here. Poke that hole through. And that's it. Bring the squid, see which down on it. Believe it or not, it's definitely a Florida thing that I wouldn't have thought about before, but it catches fish. So it's a hundred foot of, um, it's a hundred feet of 60 foot mono for the, uh, for the leader here. I'm gonna let that out. And I've got two styles of, uh, of inline bridle rigs here. I want to keep the boat relatively straight here when we're deploying these. Okay, so now you can see the bridle up there. I'm going to come back here. You keep the... Uh, the weight side towards the boat. And what happens is, is when you set the planer, it's going to go like this and create a bunch of drag and go deeper and bring your bait down with you, which this is only a size four planer. This is gonna be the longer one. And the point of it is to get your baits out of the boat wash, get them underneath the bubbles. I'm gonna let this go. And I'm gonna let this go for a count of about 30 seconds while we're going about seven knots. People have different ways of setting it. I like to just grab a little bit of extra slack, put the rod in, and bring the slack back about waist high, clear it, and let it go, and that'll set it. And the fun thing about planers is that when they're set, the rod is bent down, 
and when the bite hits, triggers them, and they go flat in line with the current right up to the top, and the rod tip pops up. So it's the total opposite of every kind of fisherman's instinct where the rod tip goes down versus up for a, uh, for a bite. This next one's gonna be the deeper one. It's gonna be a size six planer. A little bit of a different inline bridle. Both of them, both of them work. And this one's just got a little bit of a darker color, which you tend to think of using darker colors lower in the water column. Although last time I was out, I had more bites on, on the shallower, brighter one than I did this darker one. So you wanna, every day is different. If you're only getting bites on pink or blue, go to pink or blue. Forget about doing darker colors. If you're getting bites on the darker colors, go to darker colors. But I like to start with a little bit of a variety until we figure out if something specific is hitting. Frankly, I have very few days where I feel like color matters that much. I feel like most days, it's just a matter of presenting the baits the proper way. So, when you're deploying a second planer, it is even more critical to make sure that you are running a straight line so you don't tangle these. You get 100 feet of extra, um, you get 100 feet of extra leader back there, skip around the surface. You don't want to have a day ending tangle because when you're by yourself, you're probably not going to spend the time to create all new leader and rigs when you've only got you know, two hours maybe to chill in the morning. Good girl. Pretty straight there. So we're gonna let out the leader first. So if people ask what the right speed is for doing this kind of planter fishing, and it's it's very different every day. It depends on the current, depends on the wind, depends on the waves. So every day is different out here. So this one's got hook style loops. And I find that the bigger planers work better sometimes this way. But the risk of one of these bouncing out with a big fish on or in larger waves is higher. So there's pros and cons. And honestly, when I'm out here by myself, I like to try different things and mix it up. and see what I can get into. I don't feel the pressure of having to put fish in the box for someone's, you know, day trip. I'm doing a 10 second count on this one because it's going to be deeper and closer to the boat. Just like last time, I'm going to pull some slack. Man, they were going to fish on that one. So that's either, I think that's already a fish on. I think I caught that on, on the deployment. That of the planer, uh, I think the planer came off, going side to side out there. And I think I just lost the planer. And that was what I was telling you could happen with these types of uh, inline bridles. I think that'll be the last time that I used the uh, loop and hook style. All it took is one of those to come off in one of these waves, and that was it. Well, didn't have any extra loops for the plane with the other planer, so we've cut it off and we're gonna troll a DTX here and see if we can pick up something on the deeper side. So I'm only gonna give this about a 10 second. So these uh, deep lip lures are easy to pop on if you ever want to repurpose a planer rod like in the middle of your trip without having to re-rig everything. I've had mixed success, a couple of bites. I haven't caught anything great on them yet, but I, you know, I read other people are, so look at this one a little bit more. Just passing over a wreck here, if you look at the sonar there, it's the Hydro Atlantic, just outside of the Boca Inlet. 
166 feet of water. We're gonna roll right over it here. Let's see if we can pick something up. Got a little bit of older electronics on this boat, but I'm still not seeing a whole lot of fish up in the water column, so probably a bit of a lowered expectations going over this one. <laughs> We got got hooked up on the uh, on the DTX right by the boat. 250 feet of water. We are still off of Boca here. Double speed back a little bit. Over it's Oahu. If even a winter sailfish, I'll go out to the. Now it's not giving me a whole lot. Hoping he's still on. I already did the leader. These deep dive lips pop out really hard. Actually, he's, he's on. Yeah. Let's be back just a little bit more. There he is. See what he is. Hoping for the Wahoo. It is a Wahoo. I can see the stripes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, out of the props. Trying to get one more run in on me. Not a great gap shot, but you know what? He's in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying I hadn't caught anything great on that DTX, but won't be saying that anymore. Cause that is a pretty solid wahoo. Ah. Yeah. What do you think, Skipper? <laughs> All right. Woo! <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. All right, we're gonna get back to fishing. And I will. Get this fish into the box and get it redeployed. DTX, less than a, actually it was about 150, 120 feet off the boat. That was it. So just wide underneath the bubbles, close to the boat. Goodyear Blimp, it's a staple here in Pompano Beach. Beautiful January day. My co-pilot Skipper. Best first mate a guy could ask for out here. Probably getting towards the end of our troll. It's going on 10 o'clock. Probably give another half an hour, then we'll look for a spot to do a little bit of bottom fishing. <laughs> Alright, 
so we uh, chilled for about 90 minutes this morning. Uh, three bites. One, one was a short strike, one was just a quick hit and it was gone, and the other was the wahoo that, that I landed. Um, yeah, I had a, had a little issue with the outrigger arm earlier, I wasted about 45 minutes getting that done, and now we're going to try a little bottom fishing. So we're between Boca and Hillsboro here. I threw the anchor in about 110 feet of water, let rope out, so we're, we're now in about 91 feet of water, and we're really um, out in that sandy rubble area that is just east of the second reef that runs the whole coast out here. So what we're gonna do is throw a couple lines out. I already have the chum in the water, so chum's already out and working. We're gonna throw a couple down here. If we don't get a bite in like 20 to 30 minutes, then I'm gonna let out more rope and drift in closer to that like 80 foot range to get closer to the uh, ledge and see. So it's January, grouper's out of season. So we're hoping to get some uh, mutton snapper. And I'll show you um, a little bit of what these bottom rigs look like. So standard, you know, five to seven hook depending on what you're uh, targeting here. And um, I'm gonna put a, uh, a pilchard on this one. All right, so we're gonna just let him out a little bit there. And then I put about a 25 foot 40 pound uh, liter of fluorocarbon. And then what I top it off with, so I bring this back to show you guys. So um, FG knot, which is, you know, pretty decent. Wouldn't tell you that I'm, that I'm an expert knot tire. Um, and what I do is take a weight, and this we're gonna do a 16 ounce bank sinker here that I just got looped around with lighter fluorocarbon than this. So if this gets hung up somewhere, we break this off and we don't lose the whole, the whole rig. So then what I do is drop this here. You don't even need to, cl to clasp it because the weight of it on the braid will keep it. Now I'm gonna just let this drop down. I'm gonna hold the line and kind of keep some pressure on it. But what I don't wanna do is just drop it down to the bottom and let it, um, and let it get all tangled up, right? So there's a, a decent current here for bottom fishing. It's, uh, you don't want to be bottom fishing in uh, in no current at all. So this will pull the weight just a little bit on the way down. I think we're at bottom there. So once we're at bottom, I usually give it a couple of turns and then I'm gonna let that sit. Got hooked up. Something down the bottom here. 94 feet of water. I'm afraid it might be a shark though. That or maybe a grouper heading for a hole. <sighs> Went on a good run initially and now it's locking up down in the bottom. I can see if he'll come out. Yo guys, we uh, got three bites today on the troll. Uh, one on Pink Sea Witch on the, sh on the longer uh, number four planer. One on the DTX Minnow, which is the one that we landed. And one, one short strike on a uh, on the blue tuna taco, but it was really fast. Like, errant gone, so it didn't, didn't ever hook up. Bottom was nothing. We just got one, one what looked to be a shark swimming away from the boat while we're anchored on the bottom. And uh, heading back in before lunchtime. So not bad to come out here with three bites. Not not as many as we'd hoped for, but I spent a good uh, 45 minutes messing around with the outrigger that I had an issue with this morning. And when you get up at 4 a.m. to get the first bite, like you should just not worry about an outrigger and just uh, just fish. So. I wish I had just gone with one less line and got in some of that best Philly morning uh, fishing time, but a little bit of a lesson learned there. 
and um, yeah, it was cool to get a bite on that DTX Venom. I've been trolling it like three or four times with just catching Bonita and not much else, so I didn't have much faith in it. So that was that was awesome. Um, a while it looks like it's at least 20 pounds, so I'll, I'll weigh it back up here uh, at the dock. But until next time, thanks for, thanks for tuning in to the uh, GTP Angler, and uh, see you guys next time. Well, the, the catch and cook videos are popular, I'm told, new at this YouTube game. So we got a, a nice 24 pound wahoo that we caught out this morning. Was the uh, only fish that brought home today, which happens sometimes. So we're gonna fillet it up real quick and um, cook it up tonight. And uh, wahoo, uh, great, great sushi style fish, just um, no commercial fishery for it, so hard to come by. Great tasting fish, a million ways to cook it. The minimal, the better. It's, it really is a great fish. And I uh, won't pretend to be the best, uh, the best fillet master, but we'll put together a couple of decent fillets here. Try to work this flexible blade in there. And that backbone. To get along his shoulder there. And I can almost already taste this meat. Wahoo are such a delicacy. Try to get it to release off of here. Minus the bad gaff shot, this is one heck of a fillet. Look at that. That's gorgeous. So, maybe you've seen some of my last videos where I tried to hit a head shot to preserve these fillets like this, but um, I missed it twice. Didn't lose the fish, thankfully, but hypercognizant now just to get the fish in the boat, even if it means I sacrifice a little bit of the little bit of the meat. That's okay to have the, I'd rather have the fish than the uh, story of the perfect gaff shot. For people that do this all the time, I am 100% open to leaving your fillet tips in the uh, comments. Always trying to get better and learn. All right, well I meant to make the fillet video earlier but the, uh, the GoPro battery died so you got to see the first part of it. So what I've got here is uh, part of the fillet. And a reminder, so we didn't really cover this in the video earlier when I was fishing. So that Wahoo 24 pounds was caught on this Nomad DTX. It was the 140. Um, honestly, it was on a 100 foot um, leader. So, and it was probably on a 10 second count going about six knots. So it honestly was right behind the boat, just beneath, you know, all the, uh, all the white water. Um, I rigged it with 120 pound mono, about 10 feet of it, and it was that simple. These things run, run pretty true. Uh, up until today, I've only caught Bonita on them, so I didn't have a lot of faith in it, but produced a nice Wahoo. So, um, that said, let's uh, talk about what we're gonna cook tonight. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, one of these nice fillets. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grill it. We're gonna put skin side down on the grill, but we're gonna start with some soy sauce. It's already open. So, I don't really measure anything when I'm cooking, so 
a good, good splash of soy sauce. We're gonna then add a little bit of sesame oil, toasted sesame oil. Just a little dab of that. And a spoonful of minced garlic. Most of my recipes require a spoonful of minced garlic. So we do that, seal the bag up. Going to give it a couple of shakes to mix it all up. We're going to throw that in the fridge. And now we're going to cut up a little appetizer here. So I'm going to just take one of these nice, nice chunks, skin off both sides, cut it into some nice, call them sushi sized chunks, but it's going to be more sashimi style. cut a few of those up. I won't have you guys watch me cut all of it up for the family here, but you can get a few, uh, few decent pieces. We're gonna grab some bell pepper. So I'm sorry, jalapeno. My um, sweet neighbor Emily founded these red peppers. I'm not sure what kind. If you can identify it, put it in the comments. This was, she was at a farmer's market and said it was just a very hot pepper, so. She knows I love spicy food, and I think a little bit of heat just makes the, uh, the Wahoo taste better. So real simple here. We've got a few of these items. We're just gonna grab, uh, these are almond crackers, super crunchy. I'm gonna grab that, one of these nice peppers here. I'm gonna dip this into some soy sauce, throw it on the cracker. So good. We'll uh, wrap this one up and I'll catch you guys out on the grill to uh, grill. <laughs>
guys, I kid you not. Swimming in the ocean this morning on dinner plate tonight, and it does not get any better than that. So bon appetit to us, and we will catch you guys next time on Guggen to Pro Angler. Thanks for stopping by, guys. <laughs>